Hi guys, I figured before I actually show you how to use a bone tool to apply to uh, a character, I actually show you just some of the basics of the bone tool and what it's about for those of you you know new to it. Um, here I made a little schematic diagram that shows you um, a little illustration of the two main ways that I know of that a bone tool is used um, and what the actual bone looks like. Now if you think of the bone <clears throat> The bone tool is used to create a bone-like structure. Okay, it kind of emulates the way a bone um, functions and looks. So, <clears throat> think of this: the line as the bone, and is connected by two joints. Now, joint A is actually where you start the tool, start the bone, and um, joint B is where the bone ends. Now, joint A is generally fixed, and all the rotation will occur around that joint. And uh, joint B is pretty much where you attach the bone or the joint to. So everything attached to this point will be able to rotate around B. Now, the two main ways the bones is used, the bone tool is used, is uh, to it can use to connect different symbols together, or it can use to um, animate a, a symbol itself. So it can be used within a symbol, or it can use it can be used to connect symbols together, and and you know rotate them or animate them about each other so um in the next tutorial i'll go into you know using the symbol the, the bone tool to connect symbols but in this tutorial I'll, I'll actually show you how to um animate a symbol with the bone tool um of course you can see how you know they can be used for different purposes depending on whatever you want to animate or what is it you want to do or you can even use them in combination you know it's up to you um, I generally use it in this way because of the way my characters are made up. But, um, I mean, I can find a lot of different uses for this way as well. Um, so first I'll show you how, you know, you use it in this sense. And I'll go ahead and um, show you one of the symbols I already have created. This is just a generic symbol I created. It's just um, a blue rectangle. I'll blow it up so you can get a better look at it. Okay, so <clears throat> to apply the bone tool... So I first have to go into that symbol um, by double clicking on it. Now, if you notice, I'm actually inside, you know, the raw artwork. This is this is just the drawing or the the the, the vector stuff, right? So to uh, select the bone tool, which is here, you can just use the shortcut M. And I'm using a, an, an Apple computer, so you know, of course. Um, I think it may be the same with the PC or, you know, maybe a slight vari variation as far as the command key and control key, but that's about it. So I'm going to create two bones within this uh, um, box. And um, wherever I click first, that will be like my fixed joint. So all rotation or, or movement will be around this point. So I'm going to use, I'm going to select the top. I could select the bottom, doesn't matter. And uh, to first start creating the bone, you, you you click and hold. And then you drag to wherever you want. This is just one bone. So I want there to be two bones. So I'm just going to end this bone uh, at around the midpoint area. And I release. Actually, notice that it says it cannot be applied to a stroke. And I was clicking on the, the stroke itself and not within the, uh, the fill area, which is where you have to click on. So I'm going to click on the fill area and then uh, release and then to start the second bone and actually click on where that bone ended and then uh, release so notice all the points uh, for the bone structure has to be you know within the um, the fill space of that symbol now <clears throat> notice if you look down here you'll see the armature now the armature uh, a layer which is just created when once you create a bone a bone structure, an armature layer is created as well. So which which houses the um, the bone structure. So <clears throat> notice layer one, which actually had the symbol, is now empty because it's almost as if the uh, the bone structure used up the symbol and now it's just one unit, right? So notice the uh, also that the bone tool is still activated. So if I should click on this, I'm telling the computer to create another bone, which is not what I want to do right now. I want to start animating this thing. So you select, you first um, go to the select tool, which, you know, the shortcut for that is V. So that enables you to, you know, start animating it. Now, if I click on the, the, the top joint, this is what happens. 
Now, pretty much all I'm doing is um, just rotating the symbol. I'm not necessarily animating the bone structure. Notice the bone structure is pretty much fixed. And um, this acts like a fixed joint. Now, if I want to start animating the, um, the bone structure, what I do is I select the end or the end of the, the last bone. And then now you see what happens. So this is what you can do. You know, you can bend it, and twist it, you know, <clears throat> and wherever you leave it, that would pretty much be the pose. I'll undo that. Now, um, let's see what I'll do first. Well, notice that the timeline is empty. All these frames are empty. So if I want to be able to create an animation, I'd have to actually give it some frames to um, in which to animate. So say, for example, I want uh, 30 frames. I'll click on um, frame 30, and then I'll hit F5, which is a shortcut for creating frames. Now I have this, you know, 30 frames in which I can, you know, do my animation. Um, if you notice, uh, usually there is a circle in the frames where you have keyframes, and the armature timeline is actually replaced by a diamond. So this means it this whole area only contains one uh, keyframe and there's no other change in, in the um, the symbol throughout this frame space okay so to go into some of the information that the properties box will show you about the um, a bone I'll just go over each one um, first you up here if you notice you have like this little um, navigation panel this pretty much is is useful for if you have um, a bone structure that has many symbols in it and uh, you want to pretty much navigate your way through the um, the structure, to, you know, to you know locate uh, a specific bone. You can also name them. So, say for example, I'm pretending this is a a leg, and I'll name the upper bone uh, the upper leg, and I'll name the lower bone the uh, lower leg. Um, now. Some of the basic information you have location, which pretty much tells you where it is on the um, on the stage. Here you have speed. Now the speed pretty much means the response time. How fast does this respond to your uh, to your 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 motion, and also how much how quick it responds to you know twisting and and so on and so forth, um, which can be pretty useful when you have like a, a structure again with a lot of symbols or a lot of bone structures in it. So, you know, it, it makes everything move a little slower so you can manipulate it a little easier. So if I, if I should decrease this, the speed to around um, 20, you will see how the difference. See, it's, it's a little slower in how it responds to, you know, my movements. Which is, you know, can be useful for when you have, again, a structure with a lot of symbols in it. Um, I'll leave that. Going down, you see joint rotation. Now, this is pretty pretty useful because it it enables you to 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 determine if there if this all movement around this joint will be fixed or this joint will be fixed. So, in other words, I notice that there are two there is rotation about both joints. I rotate I can rotate the the bone structure around this joint and also around this joint. If I want to en uh, enable just moving around this joint, I'll disable. I'll select this this bone, and then uh, D D select uh, enable. So notice now, no movement occurs around that joint, only the lower one. You know, so <clears throat> that's what that does. Uh, if you notice uh, here also, you have constrain. This pretty much means I can while I can also um, enable enable this joint. So now there's movement around it. But notice that the movement occurs around the whole 360 degrees. I can actually limit the amount of uh, motion that occurs around or the range of motion around it by using the constraint control properties. So when I hit con constraint by default, the setting, uh, the limits are set at minimum of 45 degrees and a maximum of uh, positive 45 degrees. And 45 degrees means uh, 45 degrees from 
this lever. Actually, I'll, I'll zoom in so you can get a big, better look at it. So it means pretty much that, um, actually, I'll use the uh, upper joint so you can get a better idea. All right. So it pretty much means that, um, pretty much means that now, see, motion around that joint is fixed. And um, the negative means 45 degrees counterclockwise. And the f positive 45 means 45 degrees clockwise. So now <clears throat> from this point zero, I can only, you know, have this kind of movement. So if I wanted to make it like, uh, say, uh, I wanted to stay within a, um, 180 degree, 180 degrees below the horizontal line. This is what I'll do. You know, you can just play with that and see, the, you know, the different effects it has on your uh, your symbols. You can find different uses for it. Um, now, this X and Y translation pretty much means. Um, notice that when I when I rotate. The upper joint remains fixed. It doesn't move. Its position is fixed. So if I wanted this this joint to be able to move up and down or left and right, I would actually enable translation here. You know, which can suit your purpose for whatever you want to do. Uh, it, it cannot actually make the character or symbol a little difficult to control because it will start floating around. Um, I'll just show you that what it looks like. So now I'll be able to you know do this. All right, I'll undo that. Um, another thing is, uh, the last thing is a spring effect. Now I'll actually, you know, animate this symbol so you can see how that works. I'll go to frame five and um, I'll move it in that sense. And then now you can see how it animates. And I'll go to frame 10. Notice that the bone, uh, structure actually disappears whenever you click away from it. If you want to select it, just use the select tool and click on anywhere in the symbol and it will just activate and appear. There you go. So I'll just move it back to its former position and that will be a pose. So you notice the keyframe is just automatically created. So I'll play through the animation so you can see the way it looks. That's what happens. Notice the movement is, is sort of robotic. You know, there's no um, bouncing or flapping or anything like that. Now, if you wanted to give it a more lifelike effect, you can use this, what's called the spring effect, which pretty much means it acts like a spring. So the strength is set to zero by default and the damping is set to zero by default. The strength means how springy will the action be? And the damping means how long will that springy effect take to die down? So it's almost like that how long it takes for that resonance to you know dissipate to zero to dissipate to zero so um I just set the uh, spring to hundred and the damping to say fifty so now you will see the effect it'll have on it see. That's what it does. So, you know, that's pretty much the basics of um, using the symbol, um, the, the bone tool within a symbol. You can see how it can be useful, like uh, if you want to animate um, arms or, um, or legs or, you know, trees or anything like that. You know, you can, there's like an inf infinite number of possibilities, you, you know, for it. So, you know, feel free to play around with it. And uh, in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to actually use a bone tool to um, animate, you know, between symbols.